these are two layers of, of western fur. One layer is going this way, the other is another layer coming the other way, which is building that, I call it, let me say, the caterpillar shell that's, that's on there. And it only has an insul insulation on top of that, so it's really a, it's a, it's a fairly th thin room. And the horizontal joints that you see in there, there are scarf joints. They're, they're laying over one, one another like that, when in the horizontal joint. <coughs> and every one of the boards that go over it, they're connected to the edge beams by a split ring connector. It's a ring that's let in. Mm -hmm. So you can count the number of split rings that are holding that, uh, that uh, structure together at that point. And as the, if you go crosswise, this is the roof is a twist. And every line is horizontal that runs, say east, east and west on here, or, or, or north and south in that. The, the twist is when you when you go on the diagonal, and there was an original uh, one built in, in wood down in North Carolina in the probably very late 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 fifties, which was done out of plywood, which didn't hold up, and they had the edge beams on the outside. And to my mind, when I did this, the out, having, which would have taken the structure and put it on the outside, it was a pretty raw form. And I can't ever, the cantilever, all of a sudden, all of this has a twist to it. The cantilever is straight. So when you look at it, when you come in, or you look at the pictures, I was trying to create a gull's wing, a shape that had this type of thing. You know, going on, and if you look at, look at the pictures where you stand out there, you, you see that, and it was trying to get the softness. And what I was after with, with this, at the time wasn't an arbitra arbitrary shape, you know, to me. It was something that gave me containment on the outside corners and enough lift inside to create this. I didn't want it higher. and. Uh, the orientation is important because the way it's oriented, we get good summer shade and we get winter light because this plate glass would do what the last house that, that you saw, it would ice up in the, uh, in the winter time and it would, uh, on real icy days, it would melt slowly <laughs> on, on the inside. And, uh, <clears throat> And that, that was basically how, how, the, how, the, how the structure works on, on, in the house. And uh, the, at that time, you have to think when this was, uh, I got out of school in the early 50s, and that time you were influenced by Wright being one, you were influenced by Johnson. We used to have his house, glass house was built and we would have classes sometimes in his house. You had Meese with the Farnsworth house. You had the influence of uh, Belushi was here from Oregon, Washington. Uh, he was an influence and Neutra was an influence. And at that time, Louis Kahn was very much of an influence because he was such a, he was such a good, say, instructor. Not instructor so much as uh, he could, he, he could get, he could get into your projects with him. Or he'd get, he wouldn't do it himself. He'd get, he'd get, he'd get you to express your, yourself with you know, thoughts and things. And uh, so, the, those, those, that, those were the years that you were getting that. So you had things like you had Philip Johnson's last house, you had Mises Farnsworth house that was going in there. You had an influence of, certainly by right, a couple of the, you know, my classmates at the time 
they just would try to turn themselves into right themselves in retaliation. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, Neutra was an influence back in that time too, which was to take off. And it was, uh, the Bauhaus was very strong at that time when uh, uh, that was going on. And as historians, Gropius was a part of it, which came out of Harvard. So the, those were the you know, influences. And there was no, uh, it, it was, the time it was e e it was easy to be creative, and you, you weren't you, you felt no in, inhibitions to basically do do what you want to do. I, I assume much is the same today. Does everyone do what they want to do today? <laughs> except, except for McMansion. There were no McMansions back in those days. So that's uh, pretty much. It. What you see downstairs are the three children's rooms and the playroom, which, which that was that part of the house. And this belongs to us, that was theirs downstairs here, when we went through it. And at that time, the other work I was doing, I built several of the Canaan houses, Stanford, you know, in, in this area, and uh, in, in different styles, but- uh, Including the one up the hill. Pardon? Including the one next door, the one up, no, the, up one the hill. On, the one up on the hill was one. Yeah. You know, I have sketches here of some, some others. That, and the majority of the ones were flat roof houses for, again, for the time that you're looking at. When, when uh, I was in school, we had, we had our drafting room, and up on the walls we had sketches of glass houses. Some of the glass houses would be on the moon, same house as was Johnson's house. You know, some would be down in the Antarctic, some would be in the desert, but it was always the same house, but here, here, here in, in, in different areas. That was a point. The Sarana was an influence back in, back in those days, too. What was it like to live here? Uh, extremely pleasant, yeah. I mean, you said that there was a grand piano in the corner. Yeah, there was a grand piano. Yeah, the square grand uh -huh. it was an antique, <laughs> but it uh, had to be tuned to be too much. And uh, no, it was just that we, you know, I you know, had a small family, g growing family, going to school, so it worked out, uh, you know, perfectly from that uh, point of view. And it's, you know, it's not a house like you just had. It's not a huge house. It's not a wealthy house at all. So I, I left it in 78 and we sold it and actually moved it. We were sailors, so we moved over to the water. But uh, many respects, I wish I had. <laughs> so that's the summation of, of this house. Tell us about the turnbuckles down, downstairs. <clears throat> we, had, uh, we had some Germans that were working in uh, in some of the steel work that we had. We had tie downs. There's, as I say, nothing's holding the roof up, but the steel that's holding it down to the foundations because of the, you can imagine if the glass blew out, the lift, the airplane wing effect that you had. So we had these turnbuckles going off, off and one, <coughs> one of my German you know, contracts was this big, you put a crowbar in the terminal and, and bring it down. And uh, one time he was hanging on it, and uh, I had my, my engineer up, and he said, that's, that's, that's enough, don't, don't try anymore. The tur tur they're back in the concrete piers, there are big plates back there that the, with you know, bolts that size that hold, hold the end of the rods. And the turnbuckles were to create not tension really, but they, they were more protection because if anything happened to the piers outside, again this is above, you you get you, you get the lift going out like that. So they're not holding up the house. It's just an insurance. They're, they're, uh, 
Well, between that and the piers on the side that's holding up the house, because that's totally where the, where the load goes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys still have some more yeah. looking around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we're recording. Okay. 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 Ok